Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to learn about the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which gives us a way to find derivatives of accumulation functions. And here it is. If capital F of X is the integral from A to B of little f of t dt, and little f is a continuous function and A is a constant, then capital F prime of X equals little f of X. Let's do an example to see how this works. Suppose capital F of X equals the integral from three to X of cosine t dt. This means that little f of t equals cosine t. And by the second fundamental theorem of calculus, this means that capital F prime of X equals cosine X. All we had to do was literally place the X into the T of the cosine function. Now you might be wondering, how is this possible? So let's solve this the long way to prove that the derivative is actually cosine X. If we take the antiderivative of cosine T dt, we get sine T and we'll evaluate that from three to X. That gives us sine X minus sine three. This means that capital F of X equals sine X minus sine three. And now we'll take the derivative of sine X minus sine three and we get cosine X. Let's do another one. Let's say that capital F of X is the integral from two to X of the quantity of T squared plus T dt. To find capital F prime of X, we can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which means that all we need to do is replace the T's with X's in the integrand. And that gives us X squared plus X. Once again, just to show you that this does work, let's solve this the long way. If we find the antiderivative, we get t cubed over three plus t squared over two, and we'll evaluate that from two to x. That gives us x cubed over three plus x squared over two minus the quantity of two cubed over three plus two squared over two. And if we take the derivative of this function, we get x squared plus x. Let's try another one. Find the derivative of this function. Now I hope you can see that we don't need to solve the integral. We can just use the shortcut. Let's replace all the t's in the integrand with x's, and that's the answer. So capital F prime of x equals x cubed times ln x. Now here's an interesting example. Capital F of x is the integral from two to three x squared of cosine t dt. In order to find the derivative, let's first solve this the long way to actually determine what f of x is. So the antiderivative of cosine t is sine t, and we'll evaluate that from two to three x squared. That gives us sine of three x squared minus sine of two. Now, when we take the derivative, we get cosine of three x squared times six x by the chain rule. And this brings us to another part of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. If capital F of x is the integral from a to g of x of little f of t dt, where f is a continuous function, a is a constant, and g is a differentiable function, then capital F prime of x equals little f of g of x times g prime of x. Do you see the shortcut? We just need to replace t in the little f function with g of x and then multiply by g prime of x. So let's try an example. Find d dx of the integral from two to sine x of e to the two t dt. To find this derivative, all we need to do is use the shortcut, and that gives us e to the two sine x times cosine x. All we needed to do was replace t with sine x and then multiply by the derivative of sine x. Okay, now what I want you to do is pause the video and try these four problems. Some of them may involve situations that we haven't discussed yet, but try to use what you know to figure them out. Okay, let's discuss the solutions. For the first one, all we need to do is plug in the x to the t, and that gives us ln x. For this next problem, notice that the x is the lower limit of integration. But in order to use the second fundamental theorem, x needs to be an upper limit of integration. So let's use an integral property here. The integral from x to negative two of sine t dt equals negative the integral from negative two to x of sine t dt and the derivative is negative sine x. Moving on to this next one, remember that an integral with the same limits of integration equals zero, and the derivative of zero is zero. 
And finally, let's look at the problem where both limits of integration are functions. Let's solve this the long way to see how it works. The antiderivative of cosine t is sine t, and we'll evaluate that from x squared to sine x. This gives us sine of sine x minus sine of x squared. Now we'll take the derivative of that function, and that gives us cosine of sine x times cosine x by the chain rule minus cosine of x squared times 2x by the chain rule. And that's it for this video. Congratulations, you now know both fundamental theorems of calculus. And that's how you rock calculus.